In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings and blessings. Welcome to Faith and Family, our Prelacy's new lecture series. Der Vahan here, visiting pastor of St. Stephen's Church in New Britain, Connecticut. Today, our discussion is about attention in the family setting, paying and being paid to. In the book of Proverbs, we read, My son, be attentive to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Here, God wants our attention. And in his letter to the Ephesians, we see Apostle Paul counseling spouses to pay attention to each other when he writes, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord, and husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Let us go to the definitions of attention, considering, again, the family setting. Consciously making an effort to selectively focus on each other. Another one, observing and noticing each other, acting with each other in a civil and courteous way, and finally, sympathetic consideration of the needs and wants of each other. It's all about validating each other and creating an environment of safe and healthy belongingness. Now, few words about the types of attention. Depending on the circumstances and needs we may be facing, accordingly, we change the way we pay attention. You might have the need for sustained attention, involving orientation and concentration, selective attention, divided attention, alternating attention, goal-directed or executive, visual attention, auditory attention, explicit, which is attention with awareness, hopefully what you are doing now, and implicit attention without awareness. Rudolf Dreicher, an Austrian psychiatrist and educator, suggested that human misbehavior is the result of feeling a lack of belonging to one's own social group. When this happens, the child acts from one of four mistaken goals. Undue attention, power, revenge, or avoidance. Unfortunately, even adults at times behave the same way. Let's talk about ADHD a bit. ADHD is a neurodevelopmental disorder of childhood that is characterized by developmentally inappropriate levels of hyperactivity, impulsivity, and inattention. Examples of hyperactivity, fidgeting with hands and feet, running constantly, always on the go like a motor, having difficulty paying or engaging in leisure activities quietly and talking excessively. Now with impulsivity, the person blurts out answers before questions are completed. They have difficulty awaiting their turn, constantly interrupting or intruding on others. And finally, with inattention, the person pays poor attention to details and makes careless mistakes, has difficulty sustaining attention in tasks, does not seem to listen when spoken to directly, easily distracted by extraneous stimuli and forgetful in daily activities. Now, in adolescence and adulthood, the main problem of ADHD remains to be inattention. 
Inattention can create many problems, including family relationship issues leading to devastating situations, social difficulties in the relationships outside the family, unemployment leading to financial hardships, driving impairment, and finally, sensation seeking behavior such as substance use leading to more negative outcome. There are several options in treatment of ADHD. Medication treatment by a psychiatrist, psychosocial treatments by therapists such as cognitive behavioral therapy, family therapy, and of course, educational accommodations. What else helps? Practicing, focusing and concentration exercises, making a list of what distracts you and avoiding them, meditation and concentration, prayer, physical exercise, memorizing render stuff, reading, reading, reading. This is the antidote of inattention. And of course, practicing listening attentively and staying curious. A Bible verse comes to mind here as well. Apostle Paul again says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, very famous verse, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. Now, a couple of words about benefits when paid attention to. Feeling of belongingness and safety, being validated, being listened to and understood, self-esteem building, and of course, showing empathy is very comforting and relieving stress. And this is good for everybody in the family. To finish, not only God wants your attention, but he has and still does pay attention to you every day of your life. Just read Psalm 139. The first two verses say, You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. God knows you. God pays attention to you. And if you are paying attention today, may our Lord bless you and your family abundantly. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.